One extremely important technological application of thin films is anti-reflection coatings. So a lens like this for a camera or a camera itself has many, many, many optical elements in it. And if you think, well, reflection at a glass interface is only 4%, but something like this probably has at least 20 glass surfaces. So if you say, well, 0.96, 96% gets through, but then take 96% to the 20th power, you find that over half the light would be lost in reflections. And just losing half the light isn't that bad, but then half the light goes in all kinds of bad places. So in addition to losing half, it would show up as just a white background. So it's good to be able to cancel a lot of those reflections. So let me set this down very gently. And we will think about anti-reflection coatings and how we can use what we just learned to reduce reflections as much as we can. So the issue is we have glass. And of glass, and we know if light comes in, we're going to get a 4% reflection. So we know that we want to get rid of that. So here we have in glass, we're going to assume 1.5. So what we want to do is think about how to, how to make the reflection go to zero. Right? So we can't do it perfectly. Think back to the string. Right? When we had a string and we pulled it, we had to have, well, we could have one mass density here and one mass density here. But we couldn't really adjust to get a matched impedance because we had to have the same tension. Right? We didn't have really any option on the tension. So since Z, the impedance is mu1 times t, and they are different mu1s, they had to have different um, impedances. So they had to have some reflection. And the only option was to make up this fake ring, frictionless ring, whatever. It doesn't really exist. So it's sort of similar for light at an interface. The things that make up the impedance are mu and t, the same things that make the velocity. So for light, you could think about the index and the speed of light, right? or the, the um, the uh, uh, permittivity of free space. So you can't really adjust the permittivity, permittivity of free space. You can't really adjust the speed of light. And the optical property, the, the refractive index, is kind of like mu, right? That has to be different by definition. That's what makes it an interface. So there's no magic thing we can do to this air glass interface to impedance match and get rid of the reflections. One thing you could do with string is introduce an intermediate piece of string and then maybe get the reflections to cancel. That's what we can try to do. All right. So what we can try to do is put another uh, film on top that has n, I'll call it f, index of the film. It's some um, unknown index. And then finally, we have n equals 1 out here in air. Right. And we can see if we can achieve the condition that what reflects here will cancel, be canceled by what reflects there. And in that case, if they cancel, we can call it an anti-reflection coating. We have reduced the reflections from 4% to something much smaller. OK, so let's work out the math. We want uh, destructive interference. OK, so we need the delta for this situation to be equal to pi. All right. We want them to be pi out of phase. This one's at a maximum. This one's at a minimum. They want to be pi out of phase. So we want it to be, let's see, um, uh, 2 pi times the path difference plus the uh, phase difference due to reflection over lambda naught. You want that to be equal to pi. So uh, we start canceling things. So the 2 uh, can go away. And what is the path difference? Well, again, if we assume sort of normal incidence in the film, then the path difference is 2t in film. right? So we got to have, let's see, uh, 2 times uh, delta path is 2t in film. And then the phase difference, it was pi when we had air on the other side. But now we have a pi phase shift here, because we're going from a low to a high index. That's an external reflection. But this is now also an external reflection. So there's a pi phase shift here. So both rays have the same pi phase shift. There's no phase shift on transmission, just like with a string. So actually, the phase shift in terms of length is 0. So there's no phase shift at all there. And then this becomes, uh, this is lambda naught. And that has to be equal to 1. So you get uh, 4 t n f over lambda naught equals 1. So if you want to solve for the thickness, t equals lambda naught over uh, 4 n f. 
So the thickness you need to have a single cycle in the film, it could be thicker if we let this be 1 pi or 2 pi or 3 pi or 4 pi, it could get thicker. But assuming you want it to just be 1 uh, pi, then we get a thickness of about a quarter of the wavelength. A quarter of the wavelength divided by n, a quarter of the, the wavelength inside the material. So that will get them out of phase. But that doesn't really let you design an anti-reflection coating yet because the two properties you need for the coating, the thickness and the index of the film, are both in this equation. So this gives you some relationship between them, but it doesn't solve for them. But the good news is we still have one more thing to do. We have to have the amplitudes be the same. So we put them out of phase, but now we can see what condition will get the amplitudes equal.